This visualization is intended to make groups of related variables immediately obvious and therefore easy for the investigator to pick out of a huge initial list of variables and relationships. In this case, we're going to use the Maximal Information Coefficient, or MIC, that we've recently developed to explore some data. As a reminder, MIC is a novel measure of dependence that detects almost all types of relationships in data, meaning that it can detect linear patterns and exponential patterns and cyclical patterns, etc. And what's special about it is that it can detect these patterns equally well. This spring graph shows each variable in our data set as a ball and each relationship that is identified by the statistical algorithm as a stick or spring between balls. Each spring between balls exerts forces on the balls to which it's connected that are proportional to the association between those variables, in this case measured by MIC. So for example, variables that are very strongly related will be pulled together by the springs connecting them, and variables that are only weakly associated will not be as attracted to each other. Furthermore, users can intuitively interact with this graph by adding or removing variables, or relationships between variables, and seeing how the physical model reacts to these changes. To begin examining a data set from the World Health Organization, we can tell the simulation to include the next strongest relationships found amongst the variables in our data set, one by one. If we continue doing this, eventually we see that small clusters of connected variables begin to form. And if we continue further, we see how different clusters of related variables begin to connect to each other. Finally, we begin to get a high-level view of the structure of this data set. We can also turn on a heat map in which strong association is indicated by red and weaker association is indicated by blue. So we can immediately spot pockets of tightly related variables. We can also manipulate this graph to get a sense of the physical strength of some of these relationships. Let's take a look at some of the clusters of variables that have formed. Here we have maternal mortality rates as part of a cl cluster of related variables that includes healthy life expectancy in females and infant mortality rates. But we also see that it's connected to another cluster over here through variables like health expenditure. And these health expenditure variables are related to income variables in countries. And these income variables are themselves in turn related to a small cluster of environmental variables like electric power consumption, energy usage, and CO2 emissions. Independently, these income variables are also related to a string of technology variables like internet users and broadband subscribers. and personal computers per capita. If we look somewhere far away on this graph, we see something that's unrelated to that cluster. For example, here we have the proportion of our population over the age of 60, which is associated with things like cancer rates. This visualization really gives us a sense of which variables are related to which other variables in our data set, and more importantly, through which variables. In particular, because of the generality of our measure of dependence, MIC, despite the fact that all these relationships may look differently from each other in actuality, we can rank them on the same scale and begin to construct a graph that shows how the variables cluster based on just how related they are, rather than constraining ourselves to just, for example, how linearly related the variables are to each other.